flowing out of the separated powers are checks and balances. If one branch of government begins to take on too much control, the other branches have things they can do to check and stop the growth of that power. Well, why the separation of powers? And you know, James Madison, in his famous uh, Federalist 51, explains this pretty clearly. He says something like the following. Uh, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. And if angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. But when you frame a government which is to be administered by men, over men, a great difficulty is this. This is what Madison says. You must first enable the government to control the governed, and you have to enable it or make sure it controls itself. Separation of powers is the way the framers designed the government to control itself. By dividing power among different branches, uh, not giving any one particular person or one branch of government absolute power, you make power less dangerous. That is, you don't let those who govern use their power to trespass the rights of the governed. For example, the president can veto laws passed by Congress, though Congress can override his veto with a two-thirds vote of both houses. The president can negotiate treaties, but the Senate must consent to them before they are ratified. The people, from whom government gets all of its powers, retain important checks on government through frequent elections and the ability to propose amendments to the Constitution through their elected representatives. Some assert that all three branches are equal, but that is not the way the founding generation understood the separation of powers, nor the way the Constitution describes them. Congress, because it represents the people, is the most powerful branch. Article 1 establishing the legislative branch is far longer than the articles establishing the other two. The specific powers of Congress are listed, while the Necessary and Proper Clause grants the power to make all laws necessary and proper to carry out the listed ones. In addition, the Necessary and Proper Clause grants Congress the power not only to make laws to carry out its own powers, but also all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or officer thereof. Congress can regulate all three branches of government. Why give Congress so much more power than the other branches? Why give Congress more power than the executive, who cannot pass laws, only recommend them, and who can veto laws but be overridden? Or the Supreme Court, which is neither force nor will, as Alexander Hamilton said, to carry out its own decisions? The reason for the separation of powers and for federalism and these other structural protections was twofold. First, to protect individual liberty, but second, also to protect the public from the influence of special interest factions. Madison in Federalist 10, of course, talks about majoritarian faction and the possibility that majorities would um, grab control of the government and use its power to further their own interests at the interest uh, over the public good. But they were also very aware of the possibility of well-organized, powerful special interests using the government to, per to further their own ends. And what they tried to do was to create a design that would make it more difficult for that to happen and for the public interest to emerge out of that. Because the founders believed that an institution made up of the collective wisdom of the people and the representatives of the many states would make the best decisions about things that would affect the entire nation. The separation of powers only works if the people in their respective branches take action to check the other ones. Sometimes we f forget the whole purpose of separation of powers is to frustrate government action, to make it harder for government to act. Well, why would we want to do that? Well, because government action, of course government is good and, and we need government, but government can endanger the rights of the people. It works best, as Madison theorized, when the people in those offices actively guard against overreach in the other departments. Though we knew the importance of additional safeguards, such as the separation of powers, Madison asserted that a dependence on the people is no doubt the primary control on the government. 